Okay. You have that in your openers. I know. So <laughs> we filmed another video, one of my favorite openers, which you should watch. Make up your mind. But that's the reason. This trick is so, it can go anywhere, okay? It's, that's true. It's Welcome to another Penguin Top 10 video. My name is Eric Tate. I'm the host of the Penguin Magic Podcast, and joining me today is Nick Lacapo. Eric. How's it going, buddy? I'm still here, man. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, today we are talking about closers. Yeah. I know that uh, you and I have both performed a lot here at the P3 Magic Theater, and mm -hmm. we've both done a lot of different closers, but I know you in particular have been in the show a lot, and so you've got a lot of different closers. Yeah, I mean, for seven years, performing in this show every Tuesday night, you know, if I'm either hosting yeah. or... Typically, when we perform here, the host opens and closes, closes. the show. Yep. So, you know, doing the show every week, mm -hmm. you can't do the same closer all the time. So I'm always looking for yeah. ways to close that are really strong. What do you look for in a big closer? Well, uh, for a bit, you want a st strong trick, mm -hmm. right? You, you want to end strong. Yeah. Um, we are in some unique situations here where possibly the guest has already done something amazing. Oh yeah, so we just like right. totally pulled the ripcord. Right, but I think, so mm -hmm. for me, one of the baseline things is I want to end by myself on stage. Yes. I think it's, re it's really tough sometimes where you're doing a trick where you got people up on stage and they're helping you out mm -hmm. and then the big moment happens and it's amazing yeah. and they have to let the person go back to the audience and then you say goodbye. It just yeah. doesn't flow the right way. So that's, that, to me, that's one of the really important things. Also, where you're ending, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, like the uh, linking finger rings, which might not be familiar to everybody, mm -hmm. sometimes I might end and I'm like not center stage, yeah. right? So I'm always looking for a way to kind of finish in one, center stage, mm -hmm. Bang, applause, yep. thank you, good night. Right, so that to me is a really big thing. I think these are also like really important points, whether you're doing it on stage or as like a close up act, you still, like a lot of these things still apply. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's, that's a really important thing to think about. Yeah, now, now what's interesting there is like, I, I actually sacrifice power level of effect for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Because if the, the trick might be really, really strong, mm -hmm. but if I have to let somebody go, I'm gonna now put that before my closer Yep. and then end with something short, sweet, maybe mm -hmm. kind of funny, yeah. but as long as I stand in one spot and do it. And right? you know, what's interesting is, I, I noticed that too, uh, for the last couple of years now, I've closed with a very strong trick from the Johnny Thompson books. Uh, yeah. And, and, but it was, there was always this issue that it didn't, it didn't really end the show. And mm -hmm. so what I ended up doing was putting Chad Long spaghetti al dente after it, <laughs> which is arguably it. not as strong Such a trick, a, yeah, but it's no. just this like, it, it's just, it's the perfect way to it's a follow tag that. Tag ending. Yeah, yeah that and just I'm just by myself up there. I've done this really dumb thing with spaghetti. Dumb, but amazing because yeah. Chad Long's incredible. So don't you know? Find those tricks yeah. in, that you've learned how to do that that you can do within just a couple minutes. That you mm -hmm. can do on stage in one because those are actually closers. They're yeah. not the big powerful trick that you might be looking for. Mm -hmm. You can still do that trick. Yeah. But you kind of have to you know work. So this list is going to have some of the both of them. Yeah. Because what I've done is taken the closers that I've used over the last 10 years mm -hmm. uh, the most uh, in these shows yeah. and put them in this order. So. And we should say that uh, this is this is Nick's closers this, yeah, may, this may not work for I've anyone done. and if you uh if you have some of your own closers that you uh think that maybe are even stronger than what nick is talking about put them in the comments below and i think a few of these are available on penguin magic yeah, and so in the description are... we'll include links uh if you're interested in adding this closer to your own show but i think we should dive right in nick what's number 10. so number 10 uh and this is definitely the one that i've performed the least i've performed it a lot yeah. but um is the substitution trunk I have also performed yes. this as a closer yeah. with my old partner, and uh, how have we never done Subtrunk together? Well, that's because my partner, who w <laughs> used to work here, uh, is no longer here anymore. Yeah. Uh, our good friend Brandon Gerald. Oh man, super good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Subtrunk, uh, my dad is a carpenter, yeah. and he always wants to, uh, you know, back in the day when I was getting into magic, he's like, what can I make you? You know, Let yeah. me make you stuff. And I was like doing close-up magic yeah. and stuff. I, I don't know, Dad, you know? So I made him, I had him make me one of these boxes a long time ago. Uh, by the way, it's basically a 
trunk. This is a famous illusion. Yeah, uh, it was made, made popular by Houdini. Yeah. Uh, the Pendragons uh, got really famous doing it, but I've also seen, uh, I think, uh, Caleb and Ginger do it. Yeah, uh, and I say Tyler illusion. Do it. I mean, it didn't really become an illusion until later on, maybe when the yeah. Pendragons were doing yeah, it. Yeah, because when Houdini was doing it, it was like and a escape. legit escape. Yeah, yeah. and uh, speaking of which, you can find this uh, in Tarbell Lesson 79. Yeah, this is uh, something that you can build if, if you have some carpentry skills. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is a really entry-level big box type of thing yeah and you know why is it a great closer well you've got a really cool trunk mm -hmm. on the stage maybe you can use it throughout your show to pull your props out of it right and yeah. then at the end you bring it center stage and it's just really big mm -hmm. right it, it, the audience knows that this is the end of the show basically what it is though is that uh, it's typically done with two people wasn't yep. always done with two people but uh typically done now with two people where one person gets locked in the box it gets locked up mm -hmm. and then there's uh, a screen or a cloth of some sort usually yep. and then the two people one person's here one person in the box they switch places yeah and then the other person has to open the box and get the person out yeah and, and it's, it's amazing i know uh, when my partner and i used to do we were a juggling act and we were doing this thing and mm -hmm. uh we we had a costume change oh yeah yeah because that's, really cool. that's the other thing is you can do costume changes with it now right. by costume change i mean he came out uh, in uh boxer shorts with just big you know cartoon hearts on them mm -hmm. but uh, it was a costume change nonetheless yeah well i worked on uh, the tarbell every trick in the book project with dan oh that's right and when we got to lesson 79 uh he had to build several sub trunks there's yeah. a lot of different versions in yes. tarbell uh i it's like here's mine you yeah. know so you don't have to build this one he's like oh thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and had to build a lot of stuff yeah because uh, you're the one that you have is one of the more popular versions yep. but it's also one of the more complicated to build sure yeah so my dad built that one mm -hmm. but if you uh I'll, the clip is going to be here i'll show it to you mm -hmm. but um the method that i'm using is a little different it's right out of tarbell dan mm -hmm. had this great screen that he made mm -hmm. it's like a, a really cool stand-up screen mm -hmm. uh where and then we did the change where he's running behind and then i come running out the other side yeah right and then the screen comes down and stuff uh but dan had made that screen for the tarbell course so mm -hmm. it's just kind of novelty for me to have the screen from that project yes and i probably got to do it with brandon i don't know a dozen to yeah. 20 times over the last couple of yeah. few years so and you guys brandon i need you back man i need to do this trick again i haven't been able to do it in a while yeah you guys and you guys did a great job doing the sub trunk but uh sub trunk a, a very strong 10. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh so let's move on to because i because i think i know what your number one is um but i want to find out what is in between sub trunk I and know, a long way to go all right hit me with number nine okay number Number nine. So number nine is the sympathetic cards. Oh, because uh, you and I have worked on this for a show that we did at a really nice restaurant here in Columbus. But there's also some really good ones out there. Yeah. For those of our, our customer, our, our, our viewers who, <laughs> <laughs> for our viewers who don't know what sympathetic cards are. Sympathetic cards are. So this got popular sometime in the last two decades, I think. Mm -hmm. Now there's, there's there's a long history. Of this trick but i feel like magicians started performing it more uh sometime in the last 25 years 30 years so even now there's like some really well fleshed out versions of this. yeah i mean this goes back a long ways but i think i think derek dingle might have been one of the first people to yeah. kind of like say hey i know it's in his book the complete works of derek dingle yeah. is where i first looked at it yeah because um, his is the wine glass version right it's essentially this two packets of cards, let's just say spades on this side, hearts on this side, they get mixed up so they're in a random order, like four, two, seven, jack, king, yeah. all the way through spade. And then on the other side, some magic happens and they match, right? Yeah, like the orders the, match. The orders match in the different values of the suit. And there's different kickers where like uh, one, one card will be facing the other direction in the packet and then that same card is facing the different direction in the packet as well. It's, it's, it's a really interesting trick. Yeah, so Sympathetic 10 was a marketed version mm -hmm. that I started doing uh, where it just got me introduced into the topic of uh, having mm -hmm. it. Now, look, why is it a great closer though, that, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's a really strong trick. Mm -hmm. Now you got to kind of do it in a parlor setting because you want people to be able to see the cards, yeah. not like the substitution trunk where you can do it on a giant stage. Yeah. Right? Um, the power level of this trick, uh, maybe it's not as evident if you're just watching it mm -hmm. for, uh, as a, maybe somebody that knows magic, but man, this trick really 
I, I do it because of the power level of the effect. It def it, it's one of those tricks that kicks like a horse because as the when the first card matches, the audience is like, oh, mm -hmm. and then the second card, and then they can already see the end and want to get there. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the audience is hyping themselves up yep. as, as they're building. Exactly them. right, and it's checking the boxes along the way, mm -hmm. right? Like you're building like, holy crap, holy crap, like mm -hmm. match. Ma it's got this, mm -hmm. when you're doing it with a wine glass, it's really interesting to be able to pull the cards out at the same time from the wine glasses. I'm sure there's somebody we need to credit here for, for that structure of yeah. being not quite sure at this point. Uh, but it allows you to end with no spectators on stage. Yes. You can come out in front of the table, get the applause, uh, and it's just a really powerful effect. I mean, I, when I was putting together my first sort of big stage show, I ended up doing, my closer is, is a version of Sympathetic Cards. Now, right. I'm doing two decks, but it's still, I mean, it's just that as it builds, the audience is just like, yeah. they, they are they left slack-jawed. Yeah, no, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just a packet of cards. Yeah. Uh, in your amazing show, the, yeah. the two decks match completely, yeah. right? Uh, so it's the, the the version that I love right now mm -hmm. that I just discovered over the last few years is Paul V Hill's version. Oh, it's I mean, like it's everything Paul V Hill does is really I know. good. But, I know. But Sympathy Paul, for the Devil. Ugh. It's even got a good name. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you can find that on, uh, he did a Penguin Live with, uh, Penguin Live lecture with Johnny Thompson and Rick Ma, mm -hmm. right, which you definitely good. have. Yeah. Uh, but he teaches it in there and it's also in one of his books. Yes. Uh, I think it's in, is it in the, the, the Doors? I think it's in Doors of Deception. Uh, it, it might be in Classic Fantastic, but I'm pretty sure it's in Doors you of should Deception. should own all of them anyway, because yeah. all of his stuff is amazing. You yeah. can do that research yourself and along the way, find out how good these books are. You know, I, I know where it is, is it's in Paul V. Hill's lecture notes that he sells, mm -hmm. uh, which has got some material from both, but. Well, uh, buy but everything, Paul V. It, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's it's yeah. so good, especially if you're looking for tricks to do, because mm -hmm. all of his stuff is so approach. Anyway, yeah. um, so, for me, like I got into Sympathetic Ten. Remember, we did that show at the at the wine at oh, the yeah. wine place, the really fancy upscale place. Yeah, and uh, I, that's where I was. But when I found Paul's version, yeah. all of a sudden it became something where I I I, I can almost do it anytime, anywhere. Yeah. In, in any situation where if I'm, I'm in a parlor setting and I need a, a strong closer, mm -hmm. I can just throw this in. The and, only and, thing and that win. has bothered me about that show for years is that we put sympathetic cards in the wrong position I in the show. Had it like closing the first half or something? Yeah, because yeah, like we did sort of use it as a closer, but it definitely belonged later in oh, the show. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. It's such a powerful trick. It's a great trick, but let's move on to number eight. So number eight is one that uh, is one of the most versatile tricks that I know how to do, okay. and that is the Torn and Restored newspaper. You have that in your openers. I know. So <laughs> we filmed another video one of my favorite openers, which you should watch. Make up your mind. But that's the about. reason. This trick is so, it can go anywhere. Okay. It's, that's true. So let's, again, talk about what makes a great closer. You, uh, the fact that I can stand in one mm -hmm. and, and do this trick, end on stage by myself. Now, when I am closing, so Torn Restored Newspaper, it's a newspaper. Tear it in up. Half, put it back together. Uh, the reason why... Yeah. Without tape. That's without important tape. to know. Without <laughs> tape. What's a newspaper? Uh, <laughs> no, it's by Gene Anderson, mm -hmm. and everything that Gene does is unbelievable. Uh, his book, which is called Gene Anderson, the book, mm -hmm. you should definitely check that out. That's a self-published thing, so you'd have to go on his website yeah. and find that. Uh, but you can also learn all about it on his Penguin Live yes. act. I don't think, did he do a lecture or act? It doesn't matter. Just yeah. search for Gene Anderson Live on Penguin yeah. Magic, and um, you can find out there. Uh, this trick is so versatile is because you can display any message that you mm -hmm. want or you can just use it as a trick straight up or you know, there's just so many different ways to use it. You know, I've also seen it used in uh, mentalism for <laughs> you, where you tear, uh, you tear up the newspaper to get like a piece. Yeah. Uh, and then like a, and then like a, a word is chosen from the piece of the newspaper and mm. then sort of like after you reveal it you also reveal that you've restored it and yeah. I've seen it done where that piece is also missing from the newspaper. That bold mentalist yeah. man just doing men mentalism and magic oh. in the same trick. Come Craziness. on. Craziness. Oh, it's a world gone topsy turvy. <laughs> but when I close with this, you know, this is typically this is a great example of maybe I was doing like a big uh, you know, trick where I had three people on stage. Mm -hmm. And then it was a really powerful trick, but I had people on stage and I had to get rid of them and I mm -hmm. didn't, I wasn't ending center stage like I want to be. Yeah. I would then throw in the newspaper to do something nice, still strong, mm -hmm. uh, but where I can finish by myself center stage yeah. and, and still get the applause that I want. Sometimes 
when I do this trick, it is the one trick in the show that people talk about, yeah. which drives me nuts sometimes, <laughs> but uh, yes. Torn and Restored has been a powerful method uh, for, I mean, centuries. Mm. I mean, whether it's, whether it's a cut and restored rope or something like that, so the act of destroying something and then putting it back together is very powerful and very visceral in an audience's uh, sort of... Yeah. yeah, it's a great piece to be able to, if you want to communicate a message at yep. the end of your show. I don't use it in that way, but mm -hmm. if it, you can totally use this as a vessel to get that done, especially if you're new and you yep. want to try to say something. Uh, Definitely. Man, this is an easy one to, to, to do that. Today. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue moving here because I, uh, cause I, I, can, I can sense people hovering over the thumbs down button after they've seen the I'll talk openers. forever, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, stay with the, th the thumbs up button on this because uh, we, need to, we need to get closer to the top because uh, I, think, I think I know what your number one is because I really like it. But let's hear number six. No, are we six or seven? I think we're on seven, Eric. Are we on Don't seven? Don't jump ahead. Right. I don't care about seven. <laughs> now hit me with number seven. Number seven. Number seven is dangerous. It's the Russian roulette. Ooh. The Russian roulette. Uh, I yeah. use a, a version, I guess we'll talk about the version in a second, but yeah. the, what that is, is it's come to, come to be known as the spike trick. Yes. It's very dangerous, and you should, you should, if you're going to do it, you should do it with caution. Well, we'll talk you, I'll talk about the, the best way you yeah. know, that has no, no. It's, this is an interesting no choice for a closer because uh, I know one of the places all magicians want to work is the Magic Castle. You can't do this it, trick there. It's banned at the Magic yeah, Castle. You can't do it. It's, ba it's banned at a number of venues. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got interested in this trick. So it's basically here's a, here's a bunch of paper bags. Mm -hmm. In one of them is a spike, mm -hmm. right? And then one at a time, bags are eliminated by. <laughs> Smashing your hand yeah, it, on the thing. It scares me every time. Go, again, we're here on YouTube after this video. Don't do it now. But uh, you can search for uh, mistakes uh, people have made. Yeah. Uh, 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 word of the wise, wise, don't don't search for it. It's, 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 not, it's not a good time. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of old horror stories yeah. with this trick. Uh, but I think the version that you do is 100% safe. I would never do this trick. Like, so it yep. was, I, this was never on my radar. Mm -mm. I was like, why would I, why would I ever risk that? Yep. Uh, until Scott Alexander showed up uh, at one of our uh, Christmas holiday spectaculars. Oh, you even, should definitely check those out. Go to, I think there will probably be some links in uh, the description below on, on Scott Alexander's Christmas oh specials. My God. They're super fun. That's, we, talk, we could almost do top 10 Chris Christmas, Alice, Christmas <laughs> specials at this point. But yeah. uh, the, he put out a trick called Nailed It, yeah. which is available at Penguin. Uh, there's no spikes involved. It's super, I mean, like the, I like this one because it is 100% safe. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of different, very interesting things with it. Mm. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's got a good structure. It's again, it's one of those where it like comes with a good script. So like if you want to learn how to like really ramp up to something and you're, and you're new to magic and you want to learn how to script your own shows, Nailed It's a great product to, to learn that stuff in. Yeah, now it checks the boxes yep. for, an, for a closer. Cause I can, this is actually something I can stylize make bring the mood down a little bit more make it mm -hmm. a little bit scarier right so it works great around halloween for yep. me um and uh, or if i'm do if we're part of a show that has danger elements involved yep. i can kind of turn this into something that's dangerous but i can still mm -hmm. kind of be fun and funny yep. at the same time you can put a, a backtrack underneath it so mm -hmm. there's music involved and you end in one by yourself yep. on the stage uh it's also I mean, because this doesn't use a spike, that doesn't mean it's not good. Yeah. This is pro. This is so fooling. Yeah. It's so fooling because it, it's based on his original trick, Shattered. Uh, and it this has a very pleasing method. The the best method. Yeah. The best method. When you, you find out so the secret surprised. to this, you are blown away. Yeah, because you're you're like you a instantly feel comfortable because you know you're one hundred percent safe, but mm -hmm. b you just you want to do it for people because it just it freaks people out. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw someone once do this trick and they uh, they smashed their hand on the last bag and uh, it was <laughs> it really scared the blazes out of people. <laughs> it's I was so curious to explore. It's one of the only tricks that has like its within magic. It's got its own plot structure of of the way that you interact with the audience, like mm -hmm. about eliminating bags down to one thing. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the type of trick that I had not been able to try to do. Yeah. And it was awesome that Scott put this out because it gave me the opportunity mm -hmm. to play with this. Uh, it's been a strange road figuring out how to close with this trick. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun performing and I've done it a lot um, in, the, in the shows here. 
So it's 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 still low on my list because I haven't done it a lot, but yeah. I really enjoy performing that and style of effect. There is arguably stuff that is stronger, and and mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is one of those that you know maybe you don't want to add that element of danger to your show for a wide variety of very good. You'll reasons. learn a lot if you do it. I'd recommend trying something like yeah. this because you'll learn a lot about yourself and what the audience thinks of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when yeah. you do it, right? Uh, that's uh, so. That was number seven, right? Six or seven. Maybe six we'll figure seven. it out. Where are we? I uh, don't know. Uh, let's move on to the next one on the list. Let's okay. move on to number six. Six is uh, an interesting one. It's it's something called Cryptex. Oh, this is one of those things that I haven't done, but I keep having ideas on how to do it. So what this is, it's not necessarily a trick mm -hmm. per se. Uh, this is a, it's a, what it is is a font. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can get this on, on Penguin. It's uh, Cryptex. Mm -hmm. It's by a guy named Hayne Goldenberg. Yes. And what this is, is a font that you can get that you type in, uh, the, it's numbers, you can write down numbers, but when you turn it upside down, it spells a word. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting. So uh, my good friend Ben Young used Cryptex on uh, Penn & Teller Fool Us. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Michael Kent has used Cryptex in his shows for years. Yeah. Uh, I've even, I think Dave McCreary has done a couple of Cryptex things, but it's a really neat, Wait, because the audience doesn't really see it coming. No, no. So that's why that's why it's on high on my list because I've always looked for ways to use it. So I, I might be using it in a different context. Like, mm -hmm. well, you you have to use it in some other trick. It's yeah. not a trick on its own per se, right? Yeah. You know, just write down numbers and turn them upside yeah. down. And hey, look, now it says something. Yeah, there's some cool stuff you can do where you have like a, a serial number. So you reveal a serial number and then the serial number uh, turns into something else. Yeah. Actually, there's a very popular cruise ship performer who's shared some stuff with me where he's doing really cool stuff with Bill serial numbers and word revelation. Yeah, revelations. so the, the, my first uh, experience with it was a trick off uh, Francis Minotti's Treachery of Tricks, I believe, is the name of the DVD oh, set. Yeah, yeah. Fra Francis is an amazing uh, oh, performer. Super he had a good. trick on there called Word, mm -hmm. where it was uh, an add a number, which mm -hmm. is where the audience puts numbers down, they add them up, and you mm -hmm. get a total. And then. Um, and I know you love add a number. Oh, too, I love so. add a number. I talk about add a number all the time. But um, at the end, he turned it over and it would say the word shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, and this just it really connected with me maybe just because when I was a kid, we'd do it on the calculator all the time, the yep. dumb words that you could spell in there. I'm like, man, that's really clever. So uh, I've added it in. My show has gone through a number of different changes over mm -hmm. the years, but this was something where I was playing with a serial number on a borrowed bill, mm -hmm. where that was something that you could turn over upside down. That was something that I it's like, I wish I could give you a particular trick yeah. of one of my closes that I was using for this, but I've just played with too many routines that I've closed my show with that then used Cryptex at the end. I think the important thing is it checks that box that you can send people back to their seats yeah. and then have that last moment where you're on stage in one. You're exactly right. You turn it over and then everyone is like, how did I not see that? It was sitting there in plain sight yes. the whole time. Bobby Mata's uh, Penguin Live Lecture performs this exactly yeah. what we're talking about mm -hmm. the trick is called advil on mm -hmm. there and there's a lot that goes on with a borrowed bill and he writes the number down on a chalkboard and then mm -hmm. other stuff happens yeah. and it's not until the end the end where he's nobody else is on stage mm -hmm. he's center stage he picks up the board and he turns that serial number over or whatever it was i believe it's mm -hmm. a serial number and then it says the end or the end of the show or something like that uh, cryptex is really important in this list because there's a lot of tricks that you're talking about that are tricks in and of themselves but cryptex is really more of a utility device yeah. that you can apply to other things yeah. and if you're if you're in that process like if you watch the cl the opener video and now you're watching the closer video and you're in that process of trying to figure out how to build your very first show Cryptex is like a really easy go-to that you can get creative with and add your, add more of yourself in it, but it's a good utility device for anyone who's trying to put together a show. Yes, it's something, you, it's a tool. And All if right. you have it in there, you'll figure out how to use it. Let's move into the top half of this list. Give me number five. 